Orchard Grove and Douglas Avenue. I arrived about an hour before Toronto's annual walk with Israel was due to start. I checked in at the media tent while my husband went to find our son, a U of T student, who was busing up from his apartment downtown. UJA Federation of Greater Toronto's Walk with Israel has been going on for 55 years, and when my kids were little, we all used to come as a family. But for the last few years now, I'd been coming alone to cover it for the CJN. This year, though, after October 7th, it felt important to come out together, and we weren't the only ones. For Israel, they, there's no other reason to walk. It's just, I was driven to, driven to come. My heart swells with pride in doing this. It just feels good. It feels like what I have to do. What else am I going to do? I have nothing else to do in the diaspora to sh- but to show that we're with. Israel. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Monday, June the 10th, 2024. Welcome to the CJN Daily, a podcast of the Canadian Jewish News. Is life really miserable for the Jews, or are we just glued to a 24-hour news cycle? Should we be worried that so many young rabbis are coming out of seminary as anti-Zionists? And what does Judaism say about polyamory? If you want answers to these questions, well, we don't have any. But we do love asking them. Each week, tune into Bonjour Chai to hear debates and hot takes by me, Avi Feingold. And me, Phoebe maltz As we sit down with pundits, rabbis, and scholars to talk about the most pressing issues facing Jews in Canada and around the world. Listen and subscribe to Bonjour Chai at thecjn.ca slash bonjour or wherever you get your podcasts. It was a bright, sunny morning. Clear skies, a nice breeze, perfect walking weather. But what the walk would be like this year was an open question, and I was nervous. I worried if it was going to be safe for all these Jewish people to come out with their kids in strollers and for people to wear their Israeli flags as capes when there have been hundreds of reported hate crimes against the Jewish community in Toronto since October 7th. Record numbers, in fact. And nearly 20 physical attacks against Canadian schools and synagogues. Fires, bullets, bomb threats with Israel still reeling amidst the longest war in the country's history and some scores of hostages still held in Gaza, organizers knew this walk would have to be different. They didn't cancel the event, but they modified the usual route. Instead of meandering through the north part of the city, the walk was confined to Bathurst Street, barricades on all sides, a straight line north, just under five kilometres from start to finish, without any rest stops, no food and water stations, no vendors, No booths along the way. And police everywhere. (laughs) Including extra help deployed from forces all over southern Ontario. Toronto police brought out their mounted squad of horses to loud applause. And there were cops on bicycles, scores of private security contractors, local volunteer Shomrim, and what looked like a team of serious-looking muscular bouncers dressed in yellow and orange vests who walked up on either side of the road, keeping pace with us all the way to the finish line at the Prosserman JCC. The head of the UJA Federation of Greater Toronto's division in charge of countering anti-Semitism and hate, Noah Schack, couldn't tell us the exact price it cost for all the extra security. Well, I have to say that the Toronto Police have stepped up in an amazing way. Uh, Their deployment here today is exceptional, um, and uh, we're very grateful for everything that they put in to making sure and doing everything they can to make sure that this will be a successful and smooth event. Um, uh, It's shameful that that kind of protection is necessary, and it's a statement about the state of affairs here in Toronto that uh, a community gathering to celebrate their cultural heritage um, for the biggest cultural festival in that community of the year that's been going on for 55 years. A family festival requires this kind of police protection. Um, it's it's, it's uh, not something that we should be proud of as a city, but at the same time very grateful that police are stepping up. Try to stay with us. We will go with you, we're going to let you to go, we'll give you the space that you need, but don't be scared if we're too close to you. We're here for you. As we assembled near the starting line, which in this case was a blue inflatable arch, and everybody was waiting for the signal to start, which was not scheduled till 9.30, 
I heard a bald, no-nonsense looking man wearing dark clothes and an earpiece delivering a security briefing in English and Hebrew to a small group of people who I guessed were Israeli. It turns out they were five survivors from Kibbutz Be'eri, where Hamas terrorists slaughtered over 100 people out of 1,000 residents. That's one in 10, including Canadian peace activist Vivian Silver. Another 20 were taken hostage. Vered and Rami Gold are here touring Canada this week from Be'eri to raise funds to rebuild their kibbutz. Rami is 71. When the attack started, he and his wife and a granddaughter were asleep. They scrambled into their safe room, but then the kibbutz defense unit begged Rami to come help. When he reached the rendezvous point, he discovered most of the unit, who had been trying to fend off an onslaught of 150 terrorists, had been killed. Rami grabbed an M16 from a dead neighbor, pocketed some extra ammunition, and then fought the Hamas attackers for 12 hours until the soldiers from the IDF arrived. Miraculously, his wife and granddaughter also survived. His wife's sister was executed. When did you come to Canada? When did they bring you? Uh, Four days ago. You know, in Canada, were you uh, aware of the support that the Canadian Jewish community was doing for your... You're, yes, you were aware of it? I didn't know that till the first time we uh, saw that. I think mostly, first of all, the uh, Jews in New York. That was a big parade in New York. Then we came here, started to meet the uh, communities here, the Jewish communities, and it was great. So many people. And I said more than once, this is the first time I felt not alone. Why did you come to Canada? Why? Because it was asked to come over and tell our story. For, so the, the Jews here will have the information for first hand and uh, it might help them to uh, deal with the anti-Semitism here because they will know the truth of what, what happened on day, that day and ever since and uh, I hope we can help I met young people young, uh, that uh, were, weren't sure what to do what's the right because if you're on on, 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 on uh, TikTok and everything, then the information that passes by is, is junk. And uh, they felt that if they'll know really what happened, it would be easier for them to argue or stand in front of the others. So you're coming also, for the Jewish students, also, the Jewish high school? Also, our, as girl, maybe it's not the most important, but our... Um, goal is to get help from the American and the Canadian to rebuild our home because you know the Berry is um, destroy, they destroyed and also the, the houses are destroyed we need help to recover uh, to rebuild our, our kibbutz and the people had to recover children and parents. And meanwhile, we are go- we, we are still in the hotel in the Dead Sea. I was going to ask you, where are you living since? Yeah, we are still in the uh, hotel in the Dead Sea. And now they built our uh, temporary uh, place near Hatserim, near Be'er Sheva. So we need help there also. And then we hope to return to Kibbutz Berry of about uh, three, four, five years. And we, we will need help there also. So we, we need help. But you need to understand, some of us went back to the kibbutz. I live in the kibbutz for the last six months already. We're rebuilding. We, built, we get together on weekends. And... Uh, the idea was to rebuild the kibbutz, to bring it to a condition. Now, till now, it was a war zone. The condition where the members will be able to come back will look uh, good enough and safe enough to return. What was your it. job before at Barry? I, I'm a mountain bike trail builder, and I've been doing it for the last 26 years. And everything was destroyed, so I had to uh, get new equipment, new car, new pickup, and I've uh, been. Bringing salaries for the last six months already, so the money coming in because you have to understand it's a big community and uh, no, nobody's working. So it's not that we need money only money to rebuild. We need money to to live. How is it for you to be there for the past six months? I mean, there's a lot of 
memories and ghosts. Comparing to other places, it will be, for me, it's the best place to be because I can make a difference, which means makes me feel better, and I can start to uh, rebuild myself again. Also, I felt I need to continue the fight, and that's to rebuild the place. So I'm I'm at home. You heard about how the Canadian government's policies uh, unra stopping weapons sales and that. How do you hold those two things together in your mind? I found out on that day that uh, the amount of energy that I have won't be able to hold everything. So I choose my battles. And my battle is inside the kibbutz. I don't bother even with the Israeli uh, politics because I can't make a difference. I can't change it now. I will be able next election. But for now, I do whatever I can with my, the amount of energy that I have. And uh, coming here made a big difference because I'm going home with more energy. So I thank you. His parents used to talk in English at home, so that's what yeah, I thought. <laughs> My parents told me they were Zionists. I used to laugh at them because I was Israeli. Now, I'm a Zionist. Nobody likes the Jews anywhere in the world, including Israel. There's one big difference. That is ours. And they can't take it. They'll have to go through me. Hearing Rami say that made me burst into tears, and they quickly comforted me, taking me in their arms, which made me really ashamed. I should have been doing that for them. Sorry. No, 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 no. You can't do this. Don't Why not? Because I'm supposed to do you. So I changed the subject and tried to lighten the mood a bit, and I asked them how they felt about the IDF rescue of four of the remaining Israeli hostages just 24 hours and earlier. The government will have the... Go, go, go. We'll see you later. The bear didn't have time to finish her answer as the goals were whisked off to the start line to help lead the walk. It was heartwarming to see many non-Jewish supporters who had turned out. There were Christians and members of the Filipino community and Justin Chow, a U of T student from Hong Kong. What we're doing today is so phenomenal and so important, you know, to see the unity of everyone in the Jewish community, not only, you know, for Jews, but also for allies to come together in such a big event on such a large scale, you know, because there, we've seen the news, we've seen the reports of the hostages, we've seen the pictures, the video, the footage. This is what we need, you know, momentarily, just a moment of unity, a moment of, like, just even kids and children and families gathering together to feel some kind of joy because we deserve to celebrate joy in the midst of chaos you know to come together despite the pain that we're all going through that's that's really necessary so you said you're an ally or you're jewish too just a very loud proud ally former iranian political prisoner salman sima spent months inside tehran's notorious evan prison he was there too i am here to support uh, my jewish brothers and sisters that uh, they are suffering uh, from uh, Islamist terrorism uh, in the Middle East. They are suffering from anti-Semitism. And uh, as an Iranian, uh, something that happened on October 7 in Israel, uh, my people in Iran, uh, they are experiencing the same thing uh, for over 45 years. We have a common history. We are in the same fight together. Let's fight this fight together. I heard somebody blow shofar, a sign the walk was about to start. In previous years, there would have been a raucous pep rally to kick it off with warm-up music by the Megan brothers and lots of speeches by local politicians and Jewish leaders. This year, the Toronto police chief, Myron Demke, was there, but he didn't talk. There were many politicians, including federal liberal MPs Yara Sachs, Marco Mendicino, Deputy Conservative Leader Melissa Lansman, Conservative candidate Kevin Vuong, Ontario Solicitor General Michael Kersner, and City Councillors James Pasternak and Michael Cole. I did not see Toronto's Mayor Olivia Chow, and it was confirmed that she did not come. She didn't come last year either, when everyone was running for mayor. Just recently, Chow famously declined to attend the raising of Israel's flag in a ceremony on May 14th at City Hall. She called it too divisive. Uh, All right, we're off. I think we're off. I think, I think we're going. This is, All right. This 
seems like anyway. As we started walking, it was enthusiastic, and people seemed glad to be walking together with their families or in school groups. But everybody I spoke to had been bruised by anti-Semitism this year in a way they hadn't been before, including David Fingroot, who's a public school teacher living near Peterborough, Ontario. The union that represents me, which I'm generally supportive of, uh, ETFO, um, they put out a monthly poster for uh, different uh, issues to promote various types of diversity. And generally those posters go up, but the last month uh, was to support uh, Jewish Heritage Month. And most of the schools didn't post that, n not just in Peterborough, but in the entire board. So I think uh, while it, it's important that they do support various types of diversity uh, for, for queer people, for indigenous people, for black people, and for you know, Asian people and other communities, um, I mean, it, they may take a certain position in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but I don't think that's a good excuse for them to skip out on supporting uh, the Jewish community, both for the Jewish students and staff, as well as to do a little... Uh, preventative measure against anti-Semitism locally, um, if, if that is their goal to promote equity, but we shall see. <laughs> we didn't see any protesters until halfway through the walk. Police had warned pro-Palestinian groups to remain at a designated spot well north of the event, but they didn't listen. Instead, they'd sent out small teams of flag-waving, chanting protesters to demonstrate against Israel's conduct in the war where an estimated 30,000 Palestinians have been killed, including terrorists. The protesters all had their faces covered with keffiyehs and masks. They pressed up against the barricades at several intersections, uh, are, chanting and playing Arabic music okay. over loudspeakers. As we passed by, the crowd came up with their own spontaneous reply. Bring them home! Bring them home! Bring them home! And on we went. The largest crowd of pro-Palestinian protesters was waiting for us at Bathurst and Shepherd. Maybe in total, there were about 50 protesters during the whole day, way fewer than I'd expected. At a rally I covered last March, police wouldn't allow me to approach any protesters to interview. They said it was for my own safety, but this time I was determined to try. Maybe they'll talk to me, maybe they won't. Who knows? I didn't tell them I worked for the Canadian Jewish News. I just gave my name and asked if I could speak to anyone. I went up to the first fellow who made eye contact with me, a young man in his early 20s. Yeah, we are against the genocide in, in Palestine, right? It's a human issue. And uh, all people who don't support the killing of children, especially children, especially children, right? Some say 15,000. I know the figures have changed. Regardless, even if it's one or two child, I don't care if it's Israeli or Palestinian. And the biggest problem we have is Israel is a so-called established state in the United Nations. If ISIS did it, they're a terrorist organization. But this is a country that claims to be a democracy that's doing it. They are doing a state-sanctioned killing of children, Israel. So that's it's really hurtful, you know. Yes. Are you Palestinian? What's uh, your no, no, I'm not Palestinian. I'm Indian. journalist are you uh, are you able to tell me why you're here today I want to stand with the people of Palestine and are you Palestinian no I'm Iranian you're Iranian but Iranians um, a lot of Iranians also support the Jewish they, people they, they're the ones with the uh, Pahlavi government uh -huh. yeah have you been going to a lot of these rallies yes yeah and how do you think it's gonna end by coming here today like what I hope that this stops the killing of the kids in Palestine for one right and how are and these then people hopefully, do hopefully that? the people of Palestine can have a state of their own and I live a so free too. life. I hope so too. Do you have family there? No. 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 Do you want to tell me your name? No. No. I'm, a, I'm here against supporters for genocide. I feel this is celebration and supporting for genocide, and I came against this. Is this the first time you come to a rally? To, no. To protest? No. 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 no, no. Often? Every often, of course, of course, really? of course. And you have any family back home? In Palestine? Of course, tell yes, me, yes, more. yes. I feel uh, very angry. You're ba and when you see so many Jewish people that are being, because so they're also under attack too. No, no, right? no. Who's? In Canada, they're, um, they're bombing synagogues you ask me and about shooting. Jews or yeah, is Canadian Israelis? Jews now? First. No, no, no. It's different, friends. We're not against Jews at all. So just Israeli Jews. I don't understand. No, really, Jews. Jews are not Jews. Everybody support Israel. 
And so the government. Everybody right. supports the genocide. Everybody supports the killing. Just two days ago, 200 killed. Anybody talk about them? Yeah, actually, I think it's everywhere. No, it was yeah, yeah, no, 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 no no details have been released. So we passed the protest. It's been okay so far. And now we're heading down the last stretch. You could see the finish line down below at the Prosserman JCC. We'd been walking for about two hours, which is really slow, but you couldn't speed up because there were so many people. I didn't realize how many people were there today until we reached the bottom of the hill and turned around and looked back. And it was amazing. All you could see was a sea of people waving Israeli and Canadian flags in blue and white t-shirts. It stretched back more than a kilometer and probably longer than that. I've never seen anything like it. The whole street down all the way from Shepherd into the JCC. It's a sea of people. Actually, bigger parades have happened in Toronto when the Raptors won the NBA championship and for Caravana every year. But still, UJA organizers told us 40,000 people had walked, a record turnout. Soon, we would learn that it was actually closer to 50,000 people who had walked, according to organizers, the most ever in half a century. And they raised over a million dollars, which they do every year. But all of it is going to help Israel rebuild after October 7th. There were so many people at the finish line. I heard there wasn't enough room for everybody in the after party in the parking lot. But we didn't stay because we had a long walk back to our car and I had to get back to file this story. In all, I walked nine kilometers on Sunday, 14,000 steps. For at least yesterday, my heart was a little lighter. I know it's nothing like what Israel's been facing. And I know we're all still relatively safe here in Canada, but it's tough turning out story after story about anti-Semitism. That was me singing, by the way. Meanwhile, I'll leave the last word to Michael Gilmore. He runs the Kehilat Sha'are Torah Synagogue in Toronto, and his congregation's been the target of two hate crimes this spring when a lone suspect came up in the middle of the night and smashed the windows, and then a few weeks later, someone came back a second time and broke any windows that hadn't been replaced with shatterproof glass. Uh, today is, is somewhat of a um, culmination of the resilience of our community as well as our people. I feel that whenever something you know, negative happens to our people, we always rally together, and that's kind of what I've been dealing with uh, mostly. Uh, besides the internal aspect of increasing security, the biggest thing is, you know, having so much love and support from the wider community brought to us. And just that's been the most amazing thing. And just going to the walk here just shows uh, how many people support us. We've been walking in. I had a gentleman say he's from Guelph. He's not Jewish. We had to come in and support us. So it really is, uh, really shows where people's hearts are really at. What do you want people to know about what it's been like at your congregation having these targets, for, being a target for the last couple of weeks? Uh, it's uh, It's been a dose of reality that... We're not as safe as we like to think we were, uh, but also that we are stronger than we think we are. So I think we have to just uh, be aware of our surroundings always and, and keep ourselves uh, also in, in a sense of mind of strength and, and that we'll, we're going to get through all of this. And that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily. If you walked and want to share your reflections, please write to me at ebessner at the cjn.ca. The CJN Daily is produced by Zachary Judah Kaufman. Our executive producer is Michael Freeman, and our music is by Dov Beck Levine. Thanks for listening to the CJN Daily. If you like this episode, share it with your friends because that's the best way we can grow our listenership. Y'all remember that joke from Airplane? The old lady asked for some light reading. How about this leaflet? Famous Jewish sports legends. But in actuality, that's changing. Jews are crushing it in sports around the world, and we are here to celebrate them. Sandy Kopak gets his tenth strikeout. Sack!
Hammond, his first career hat trick. 41 points for Diddy Optio. It's Sue Bird's building. I'm Gabe. And I'm Jamie. We love Jews and we love sports, but most of all, we love Kfelling over Jews in sports. Together we host Mensch Warmers, the longest running Jewish sports podcast in the world. Listen and subscribe at the CJN.ca and wherever you find your podcasts.